Yes and 50. I am sustained by the love of God. Here is the answer to every problem that will confront you, today, tomorrow, and throughout time. In this world, you believe you are sustained by everything but God. Your faith is placed in the most trivial and insane symbols. Pills, money, protective clothing, influence, prestige, being liked, knowing the right people, and an endless list of forms of nothingness that you endow with magical powers. That's quite a list, David. And we're all familiar with that list and how it torments us and teases us and it tells us that this is how we can be somebody. Yes. I want you to help me with what we discussed before the show about creating and manifesting. I had a friend call the other day said, Penelope, I don't like the fact that I have to take responsibility for what I'm manifesting. I don't like it. And then you just made it so beautifully clear to me. I want you to help my friends with it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it really starts to get simpler and simpler as you go into it. Uh, what we learn from the course, uh, and I have such gratitude for an awakened mind because it's like it saves time yeah. to learn from the master. So we have the master psychologist, Jesus, teaching us. And he basically is saying that, that creation is, is of God and like God. That God created Christ, so Christ is an idea in the mind of God, and Jesus makes many references to creations with a small c and says that, that we have creations, so that Christ has creations as well. It's like it just it's an extension. Hmm. An extension. Now, that's all at a pure abstract level, we could say, or I, I tend to use the word levellessness because <laughs> whenever we're speaking of levels, yeah. God and heaven are not involved. What is is pure abstraction, and it's it. We could say it's eternal, it's changeless, it's um, infinite. We've used some of those words in the yeah. previous program. Perfection. Yes. Yeah. And so when we talk about making or manifesting, we are speaking at the level of perception, and the, the that is where a lot of error comes in when people will say things like, "I'm I'm creating I created this illu this." Um, illusion, I created this cancer, I I'm created these, these circumstances in my life, and so forth. And shame on me. And shame on me. <laughs> and, and basically, it's, it's using that word create, it's using that, that power that comes from the power to create, when actually all perceptions are projections of the ego. And mm. so we could say that all things that seem to occur in the world and all of the world in history are, are projections and are manifestations. So, but that's of the ego. It's of the ego. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it gets back to that core thing about, you know, people say, the world is so vast. I mean, yeah. you, look at, you know, galaxies and solar systems and black holes and, and, and oceans and mountains and so forth, you know. Exactly. It's like if God didn't create that, then exactly where did it come from? And I say, well, it, it's just a testimony to the, how powerful the mind is, that to believe in the impossible, to believe in, the, in separation, which is what the ego is, yeah. That's really where the, the so-called Big Bang seems to occur, yeah. was to try to believe in the impossible or to give power to something that is meaningless. And so we have a vast fragmented cosmos. It's literally the scattering of stars in, in many different realms is kind of a symbol of how powerful this mind is that we're talking about. So we're not going to lose track of the fact that God did not create time space, God did not create this physical universe mm -hmm. because it's it's temporary, it's finite. Yep. Even the physicists, the quantum physicists, you know, whether it seems to be expanding or they say it may start contracting, you you can see the duality yeah. that's involved in all of that. And God is not a God of duality. Mm -hmm. God is a God of pure spirit and oneness. Yeah. So if we bring it down to the practical level, every time that you tr attempt to take responsibility for specific circumstances, you know, it's playing right into the hand of the ego, so, and there's a lot of guilt yeah. involved in that. And so it's more just an opportunity to call on the miracle and to really say, I want another way of looking at this. Yeah. Don't have to analyze it. Don't have to look just back into the past and judge it and figure it out from a linear perspective. It's yeah. Surrender the perspective. Because it doesn't exist. Because it doesn't exist. And now, that's such a big one for us who love mm -hmm. guilt who love to go and go to church and what, what's the word when you go and you're, you renunciate your whatever it is. Be absolved. Be absolved and all of that. We do, we like to do that. 
but, but we do that because we do feel guilty. We feel we've created all kinds of awful things and we haven't. Yes. And I think our friends need to hear that. That's very inspiring. Well, we're, we're always teaching ourselves, and, and the key metaphysics of it is that the guilt comes from believing in the belief in separation. The belief that you actually could separate from a loving God would be guilt-inducing. Yeah. But what the ego tries to do in its sneaky way is to project the source of the guilt away and outside from the, of the mind. I'm guilty because I didn't pay back the money that I owed. I'm guilty because I said some harsh words. I'm guilty because I haven't lived up to my parents' expectations. You can see that what the ego wants is it wants us to find the source of the guilt in the world, and it says, find the source of the absolution. You know, do enough penance. Yeah, um, right. Enough penance. Or enough. Do your course of miracles. Us is just perfect. Yeah. You know, and it would rather us obsess about the form, hoping that we can find the solution in form. And it's a game because who in this world has not tried to live the perfect life? Perfection is our inheritance, but forgiveness is necessary first. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is going within the mind and examining the, the belief systems that we live by. Mm -hmm. okay. but the level of behavior is just the level, that's the level of outcomes. You know, yeah. Jesus really clarifies that in the text when he says, what you do comes from what you think. Yeah. So all of our behavior modification, all of our things to become, to look younger, to be more beautiful, to be more muscular to all of our vitamins and pills and things that he was just mentioning, all this effort is an effort to, to improve the self or to maintain the self at the level of behavior. And what he's saying is that those are just effects. You need to change your thinking. Yeah. Well, when we first start to do this, we find out it's a lot easier to change our behavior even <laughs> than it is to change our thinking. That these things thoughts are true. very deeply rooted. And when you start to go into the metaphysics a little deeper, you find that your thoughts come from your underlying assumptions, your beliefs about the nature of the world, mm -hmm. of yourself, and reality. So you, you, that's what my life has been, is literally a life of questioning. You know, 10 years of college, instead of just accepting what the professors would say, I would notice that the different disciplines were like talking about each other, against each other. There was a lot of debate, mm. there was a lot of arguing, yeah. but there wasn't a lot of peace and serenity. So I just thought, well, I'm going to use these years to ask questions, ask questions. To, to go deeper. The fickle scientists were looking at a different world than the psychologists, and the psychologists were looking at a different world than the sociologists. And I began to say, what's the truth? I'm getting confused. Yeah, what, yeah there's got to be something yeah. that's beneath all of these assumptions. Simpler. Much simpler. Yeah. If there is such a thing as truth, it has to be extremely simple. And it should be an aha. It should be <laughs> something like a child coming upon something with wonderment, yeah. not something that's just a very difficult struggle. How about easy? Jungle. Easy. Easy. It should uh -huh. be easy, natural. Yeah, natural. And it doesn't seem that way. I mean, the years of questioning where the voices of the world are saying, you know, fit in, you know, find your niche, make yeah. a life, make an image of yourself, yeah. have something to plant your, you know, your roots in. Yeah. To continue and follow that small little voice has been the real, taken the real willingness because the little voice would always say, step back and see the big picture. You know, it, this isn't about becoming something in the world or attaining something in the world. This is about seeing the big picture. Yeah. And it takes a lot of faith to keep coming inward. When you're going through all the feelings, yeah. the, the um, upsets, the emotions, they're yeah. heavy at times. Yeah. They're very intense. And instead of trying to distract away with entertainment and drugs and so on and so forth, it takes a lot of willingness to, to go through Courage. the experience yeah. and then to trust that there's something beneath it. Yeah. And that's pretty much what my life has been about. Yeah. And we don't think there's something beneath it until we do dare jump. Yes. And then we find yes. out we live through it. Sure. And everything's all right. It's exactly what we were talking about in the first show, and that why would you go for God or go for something unless you had an experience that lets you know that it was real? Yes. And um, when people talk about pain and suffering and victimization and the things that are on the news and that are so prevalent seemingly in this world, it's like when I started to just say, all right, Jesus, I'm just going to give my life over to you. I don't know where this is going, but I'm going to go for it. I'm yeah. going to plant all my faith in this thing. Miraculous things started to happen. You know, the yeah. people I met, 
Yeah. The the gathering, the intimate talks that yeah. we're having yeah. to go from town to town, place to place, and have these kind of experiences as if you've known these people your whole right. life. Yeah, I know. It's, Isn't it something? It's very extraordinary. It's yeah. very much different than anything I've ever experienced. Yeah. And and then that be started to become my normal, my natural experience instead of. The old, which was kind of like a glimpse or a peep here or there, you know, you, when you really start to surrender into it, it starts to just expand and yeah. touch all aspects of your yeah. perception. Yeah. yeah. And that's the excitement. Yeah, and you show up, yes. and you're in the moment. Yes. And you just surrender. Yes. There's really nothing to do. In There's other nothing words, to do. I, with all the college, you know, planning out talks and this and that, you show up, you walk, the times I'm walking to a, to a, a bookstore or to the pulpit of a church or to a living room or whatever, don't have a clue about what's going to be said, sometimes not even an idea of a topic, and then the presence of God orchestrates the gathering. That's right. This isn't about um, persons that are supposed to be no more than others coming. This is about joining together in an intention yeah. and letting the voice for God speak That's among right. us. Yes. And where two or more are gathered, That's he is right. there. And it works. It's, I mean, there's so much energy going on here yes. today. It's so yes. exciting. Yes. And I knew from the, from, from the week that where I was really very lost, that I was so looking forward to joining my mind with your mind, David, and, yes. and sharing and extending and feeling happy and joyous and being very awake. Yes. I mean, it's, it's just, it's a beautiful experience. And it's just so simple. Yes. And it's so vast, and the experiences yeah. get more intense and more wonderful, and it's like Jesus says, you can barely keep your feet on the ground. I mean, and, and this is in a, a wonderful way. It's not induced by drugs or by, you know, I got the promotion, I got the cotton candy I wanted. No, the ego tries to lure us into thinking that our happiness can be found in getting outcomes yeah. that we want. Mm -hmm. But that self that that once those outcomes is deceived. That's right. And that's why it's it's like the hamster running around. The, the more we chase, the more we run, the more that we seem to be entwined, and it takes it takes more effort to yeah. bring about those little transitory highs yeah. and to battle against those lows, so to speak. Yeah. And what this is is just a surrender that that I am sustained by the love of God. That that by aligning my mind with God, I will be intensely happy. Yeah. And it's that simple. Yeah. The things that stand in the way of it is the ego's voice, which is screeching. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> the ego, no fool to itself, you know, is wants to preserve itself. Of course. And so fighting for its life. Fighting for its life, its so called <laughs> life, with everything that it's got and quite intensely. When we have self critical thoughts, when we put ourselves down, the ego is like a spider that sits back at the edge of the web and loves and, it. and loves it. Yes. When we start to have these loving, joyful experiences, it goes into action. I mean, it moves forward in the web, <laughs> and it will pull out everything, and including the kitchen sink, to stop us from remembering how happy we're supposed to be all the time, because yeah. it's natural. Yeah. And so, you know, the more you go into it, though, you see that, you know, as they say in Star Trek, resistance is futile. Yeah. And you might as well just give way to love, because yeah. love is the will of God. There's nothing to feel guilty about, is there? There is not. There is nothing. T talk to me about that for a moment. There's nothing to feel guilty about. And I say that from myself, who works with guilt a lot, and my friends, and we all want to hear, but why not? That's, the ego wants us to buy the game that there are certain things that um, there's a justifiable guilt for. It just wants to break guilt up into, as it does with everything, duality. There's good yeah. guilt, there's bad guilt. <laughs> you know, there's, there's justifiable guilt, like, whoa, you should feel guilty about that. And, well, you can let that one go. That's in the lesser camp, you know. But, but you see how that just per perpetuates and holds on to the belief in guilt. Yes. When we, we are coming to a an awareness that forgiveness, the real world is an awareness that that we haven't done anything wrong, that our guilt came from a misperception of believing in the ego. Yeah. It's kind of like a little child who, you know, has been told, don't go and have any cookies. You know, you leave that cookie jar alone and then looks around, your mm -hmm. mom's not yeah. looking and reaches in and then <clears throat> seems to get caught as if I've done something terribly wrong. Well, that's how the, the deceived mind feels, that believes it is separated from God. Yeah. The ego has said, you have fallen from grace, you've separated from God, and you, you've got a good reason to feel guilty. You've done something terrible. And to think that you can just pull yourself away from God and think that God's just going to sit back and allow that yeah. 
is, is not reasonable. So the ego is really trying to convince us that guilt is real. What Jesus does is he even uses the metaphor from the Bible, where the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, where it's like in, in the Bible, it's like the tree was there and God said, don't eat that fruit. And, you know, Adam and Eve, they go ahead, they, they eat from that forbidden tree. Yeah. But Jesus says in the Course is he says that, that God could never put you in a position like that. Would a loving father put his child in a position where oh my something goodness, terrible that's could point. That God would never put his child, his creation, in that position. Wow. 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 <laughs> you know, when you start to take a look at that, then oh, I feel better. <laughs> that's even a release of like an ontological guilt. Yeah. Of, of, of guilt that I've done something in my mind very terrible. When, when you really start to look at how impossible and incredible separation really is. Yeah.